Bonjour, c'est moi. Jean Reno is a French actor of Spanish descent who has many outstanding works to his credit. Despite the fact that he began his career more than 40 years ago, he is still a sought-after performer. In this video, we take a closer look at the work and personal life of Luc Besson's favorite. Leon – How Jean Reno Lives and How Much He Earns Jean Reno, whose real name is Juan Moreno Pereira Jimenez, was born on July 30, 1948, in a Moroccan city of Casablanca. A short time later, he had a younger sister, Maria Teresa. Their parents were natives of Spain who had to leave their homeland because of the rise to power of the military dictator Francisco Franco. Juan spent the first 12 years of his life in Africa and remembers that period as one of the happiest and most carefree. In Casablanca, the boy attended acting courses at the local conservatory and even then it was clear to him that he wanted to devote his life to acting. However, the parents were skeptical of their son's plans, although the mother at one time and herself secretly dreamed of the stage. In the early 60s, the family of the future actor moved to France. There, it was very tough for stateless refugees. His mother worked as a seamstress at home, but orders were irregular, so the main breadwinner in the family remained his father, who worked in a printing shop. The man had to work several shifts in a row to support his family. But even so, they lived in poverty bordering on destitution. The father of the family would come home from work tired and go straight to bed, so he demanded complete silence from his family. According to the actor's memories, both he and his mother were afraid of accidentally waking up his father because in anger, the man could raise his hand on them. So the future actor was used to moving at home on tiptoe and talking in whispers. Juan was unable to play with toys, so he entertained himself by looking at pictures and books and watched passers-by from the window, inventing a story for each of them. According to him, such childhood pastimes helped him to portray any character on screen in the future. When the young man was 17 years old, his mother got cancer and died shortly afterward. Juan took the loss hard. He still misses his mom, and the memories of her bring tears to his eyes. At the same time, the guy went to the army because this was the only way he could get French citizenship. His father, with whom he had never had a warm relationship, blurted out a single phrase in parting, I hope you stay out of jail. For the Spaniards, it was considered a great shame. By the way, in addition to his mother tongue Spanish, the actor now speaks French, Arabic, Italian, and English. The military service was a great disappointment for the future actor. During this time, his father didn't write him a single word or send him a single parcel, while his fellow soldiers regularly received packages of food and warm clothes from their relatives. Moreover, on the eve of leaving for the army, Juan fell in love with a girl, Catherine, and proposed to her, to which she said yes. But during the years of service, the beloved never wrote to him, and when the guy returned, she acted as if they were strangers. After his discharge, Moreno decided to devote his life to theater and cinema. In 1970, he enrolled in acting classes at the renowned Course Simon School of Drama in Paris, and then even organized a tiny theater group with his friend Didier Flamand. The company was engaged in the production of plays, but did not bring in any income. So, in his free time from rehearsals, Juan would take any job. He sold records at a music store, worked as a cab driver, a loader, a customs officer, and even an accountant. But his earnings remained quite low. He never received more than $10 a day. In 1974, the young man first appeared in television productions and later debuted on the theater stage. Even then, he was already thinking about taking on a stage name. At first, Juan decided to pose as an American. He grew his hair long, wore sunglasses, and called himself Jonathan Brunn. Under this screen name, Moreno has been going to a lot of auditions, but the directors paid no attention to him. Then, he decided to translate the name Juan into French, shorten the surname, and thus became Jean Renault. In 1977, the actor married for the first time. 
The girl he married was Genevieve, his course mate at the acting school. The very next year, the wife gave Jean a daughter, Sandra, and two more years later, they had a son, Mikhail. Later in life, the daughter followed in her father's footsteps and built an acting career, using her real last name, Moreno. And the son of the celebrity has a great singing voice. He inherited this gift from Jean's grandfather, who was an opera singer. In 1978, Renault starred in his first feature film entitled The Hypothesis of the Stolen Painting, playing a minor role. He reportedly received about $100 for his movie debut. Then, he appeared in other movies, Woman Light, Do You Want a Noble Baby, and Mail from the Sky. At the same time, the man acted on the theater stage, but creative work didn't bring Jean neither popularity nor large fees. The year 1981 was significant for him. Then, the actor was offered an episodic role in the comedy The Troops at the Big Maneuvers, on the set of which he met with then-assistant director Luc Besson, who played a major role in the development of his career. In the same year, Besson offered Renault a role in his first project, a short film The Penultimate, which two years later transformed into a feature film The Last Battle. Even then, the movie personalities had already established a strong friendship. However, the budget of the project was minuscule, so for his role, Jean received only 500 francs, which was around $100. Meanwhile, the actor's filmography was expanded with other films, among which the most notable were The Passerby, Outward Signs of Wealth, and Our History. Back then, because of his tall stature and hulking appearance, most of the time, Jean had to play various heavies and villains. In 1985, the actor appeared in the series Tender is the Night and also starred in the film Strictly Personal, The Telephone Always Rings Twice, and Subway, directed by Luc Besson. The latter movie made famous not only Besson, but also Renault, even though he got a minor role of a drummer. After that, Jean played in the movie I Love You, Zone Red, Tomorrow the Day Will Come, and The Big Blue, which was another collaboration between Renault and Besson. In the film, the actor played Enzo, a diver who risked his life to win the championship title and defeat his friend. You know I'm the world champion? Yeah, I know. The world championship starts in 10 days in Taromina. Be my guest. The shooting was not easy for Renault. He worked without a stunt double and performed 15 dives a day on his own, and one day he almost lost his life. The director's plan was for the man to dive into the water and slowly swim to the bottom, but despite training with experienced divers, Renault suddenly panicked, ripped off his mask, and started drowning. Only the thought of his family gave him strength, and he managed to get out of the water. The footage ended up being quite good, but Besson did criticize Jean for forgetting to smile. The role of a diver brought Jean worldwide fame, as well as a nomination for the most prestigious film award, Caesar. While his career was going great, the personal life of the actor hit a rough patch. Jean's wife filed for divorce. During the years of their life together, Renault hardly ever came home. The children grew up deprived of his involvement, and Genevieve did not like this situation. She has said many times that she doesn't want to be married to a ghost. And when it came to filming of The Big Blue, the wife gave Jean a choice, family or work. He chose the latter. In 1990, the actor starred in the thriller Nikita, playing a professional assassin, which became his calling card for many years. Since then, many have labeled Renault as the silver screen's best hitman. Victor, the cleaner. Then, the actor's filmography was expanded by the movies Operation Corned Beef, The Man in the Golden Mask, Lulu Graffiti, Flight from Justice, Paranoia, and The Visitors. In the latter, the actor portrayed Count Goudefois, which was probably his first comedic role, which he was incredibly happy about, because, playing mostly negative characters, he was afraid of becoming a one-trick pony. Il a vidé toute la bouteille Une bouteille de parfum à 6000 
The film was well received by the public, and John was nominated for a Caesar Award. In 1994, Renault voiced Mufasa in French voiceover of the animated film The Lion King and also starred in the psychological thriller Leon, the professional as an assassin who teaches his prey to 12-year-old neighbor Matilda, who wants to avenge the death of her family. The role of Matilda was played by young Natalie Portman. According to the actor, he decided to portray Leon as a bit mentally challenged and emotionally stunted person in order to show the audience that his character is not able to take advantage of the trust of a defenseless little girl for selfish reasons. Cleaner. You mean you're a hitman? Yeah. Cool. Mel Gibson and Keanu Reeves wanted to play this role, but Luc Besson wrote the script specifically for Jean Reno and saw only him in the lead role. The film was a resounding success. It instantly became a cult classic. For the role of a lone hitman, the actor was nominated for a Caesar Award. Most movie critics agree that this work is the best in Jean's career. The movie brought the actor huge fame and crowds of female fans who craved a relationship with the celebrity. But the man managed to fall in love with someone who had never even heard of him. Walking along the Champs-Élysées, Jean saw a beautiful girl who turned out to be a Polish model, Natalie Diskovich. The man followed her to introduce himself, but she just gave him a surprised look. Then Jean asked impatiently, Don't you recognize me? I'm Jean Renault. The actor literally talked Natalie into going on a date with him to a cafe, after which they began a romantic relationship. By the way, there was an opinion in the media that the previous marriage of the celebrity was ruined specifically because he had a new lover in his life, Natalie, but the man himself assures that he has never cheated on any of his partners. In 1995, Jean and Natalie got married. A year later, the wife gave birth to the actor's son, Tom, and two more years later, they had a daughter, Serena. Later on, she followed in her mother's footsteps and is now building a modeling career, but the son got into writing poetry. Meanwhile, Renault managed to star in the movies French Kiss, Beyond the Clouds, Ruffles, The Jaguar, and Mission Impossible, in which he played secret agent Franz Krieger. This film was the first Hollywood project of the actor, and the debut was quite successful. The American audience was delighted with Jean Reno and still enjoys revisiting the well-loved movie. Look at the throat going in. Everest man. <gasps> Damn. Krieger from here on in. Absolute silence. At the same time, Luc Besson wrote a script for the action movie The Fifth Element, specifically for Renault to star in, but the producers insisted that Bruce Willis should play the main role in it. Instead of participating in that project, Jean starred in the movies A Witch's Way of Love, The Sun Sisters, and Rosanna's Grave. In 1998, Renault appeared as a former agent of French intelligence in the thriller Ronin, co-starring with Robert De Niro. This film is among Jean's best works. I am the tour guide. Over there is the Eiffel Tower, over here the Louvre, over there the Toilette. <laughs> the actor also starred in the comedy The Visitors 2, The Corridors of Time, with a fee of 10 million francs, which is around 1.6 million dollars, and in the sci-fi action film Godzilla, where he had the opportunity to play a good guy, saving the world from the monster, which he handled brilliantly. Oh, you call this coffee? And I call this America. Hmm. By the way, the man is a big fan of Elvis Presley, which is why he mimicked his singing in the movie. At the same time, the Frenchman was offered to play Agent Smith in The Matrix, but he preferred the project Godzilla. Later, he was invited to star in the sequel to The Matrix, but he again refused despite the huge success of the film. He explained his refusal by saying that he didn't feel his character. By the way, another major project which Renault later rejected was Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. In 2000, the actor played the main character in the thriller The Crimson Rivers, for which he was nominated for the European Film Academy Award for Outstanding European Achievement in World Cinema. 
However, as he himself admitted, shooting this film was not easy, as the crew had to work at high altitudes in the glaciers. Commissaire Pierre Nimons. Il est seul. J'avais demandé l'équipe d'OPG au parquet là. Qu'est-ce qu'ils foutent L'équipe, c'est moi. In 2001, Renault starred in the comedy Just Visiting, which was an American remake of the beloved French film The Visitors. Only this time, the characters, an earl and a squire, are transported from the Middle Ages to the modern-day United States. Oh! How did you do that? Night. <laughs> Day. In the same year, the crime thriller Wasabi premiered, where Renault played a French police officer named Hubert. Dis-moi, comment ça s'appelle ce truc-là Wasabi. Vachement. During the same period, the man divorced his second spouse. The reason was trivial. Feelings have faded, and the actor believes it is wrong to keep a marriage alive when there is no love in it. In 2002, Jean starred in the action movie Rollerball and melodrama Jetlag, and next year he appeared in the comedy Ruby and Quentin, co-starring with Gérard Depardieu. Mais qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Ah bah, je l'ai piqué une autre. J'ai eu des petits soucis avec les flics, mais ça va y dormir. Je te dis qu'il faut se débarrasser de cette manuelle de flics et tu m'en ramènes une deuxième. Mais c'est pas la même. During the same time, the Japanese video game developer Capcom offered the actor to play one of the characters named Jacques Blanc, who got Renault's facial expressions and body movements filmed with special sensors. Jean also voiced the French version of the game. Then the actor's filmography was expanded with Crimson Rivers 2, Angels of the Apocalypse, Empire of the Wolves with a fee of $1.5 million, The Tiger and the Snow, as well as The Corsican File with a fee of $2.4 million. To master the distinctive Corsican accent, he spent considerable time on the island imitating the pronunciation of the locals. He's in Please. It's impressionant. In 2006, Jean voiced a character in the animated film Flushed Away and also starred in the films The Pink Panther, Flyboys, The Great Occasions, and The Da Vinci Code, in which he played a police commissioner. Interestingly enough, the author of the book, Dan Brown, wrote this character with Jean Renault in mind. She said, it is meaningless. A mathematical joke. Is it meaningless? I'll take another look when I come back. The novel The Da Vinci Code, as well as its film adaptation, were criticized by the Vatican, but as the actors later admitted, they never once spoke on religious topics during filming. Funnily enough, there were rumors that Jacques Chirac personally asked to take the Frenchman for the role in The Da Vinci Code. He and the actor are good friends, and they had a good laugh at this fabrication of journalists. That same year, Renault married for the third time. His fiancée was Romanian model and actress Zofia Baraka, who is 24 years younger than him. The actor met the girl a few years earlier in New York. The sweethearts held a lavish wedding in the town of Le Bout de Provence in the south of France. Many notable guests attended the event, including Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, Elton John, Monica Bellucci, and other stars. Best men of the groom were his close friends, Nicolas Sarkozy, who then held the post of Minister of the Interior of France, and rock singer Johnny Holiday. The couple was married by the mayor of the city, Gérard Jouva, also quite a close friend of Jean. The spouses had two sons together, Cielo and Dean. Unlike Renault's older children, the boys are still enjoying childhood and have yet to decide on a career path. Meanwhile, for the role in the crime comedy Cash, the actor received $2 million, and the action film Inside Ring brought him $2.2 million. In addition, Jean played in the films The Pink Panther 2, Couples Retreat, Armored, and The Philosopher. He earned around $650,000 for his roles in the historical drama about the Holocaust, the Roundup, and the action film 22 Bullets. 
In the latter, the actor played a French godfather determined to take revenge on his enemies. The movie was well received by the public and became a worldwide hit. In 2011, the drama Margaret and the comedy You Don't Choose Your Family premiered, and a year later, Renault portrayed an experienced cook in the film The Chef. Interestingly enough, most of the cast were real-life chefs as the director decided it would be easier than teaching the actors proper kitchen etiquette. Et qu'est-ce qu'elle vous dit cette carotte? Rappez-moi. Apparemment, elle voudrait qu'on la râpe. Tenez, râpez ça. By the way, in real life, Jean loves to cook and often organizes dinner parties for friends. Celebrity guests especially praise his signature potato soup. By the way, Renault's favorite phrase is, let's get something to eat. Then the actor voiced the character in the animated film The Day of the Crows and also starred in the action movie Alex Cross and sports comedy The Dream Team. And the following year, the man appeared in the crime series Joe in the role of a tough detective. The project had low ratings, so it was never renewed for a second season. In 2014, Renault starred in the drama Days and Nights and in the comedies Hector and The Search for Happiness, Benedict Ironbreaker, The Red Taxis, and My Summer in Provence. By the way, Jean admits that he never improvises on the set and always memorizes the script. One day, he decided to try something different and didn't memorize the lines, but the improvisation failed. The actor got too nervous, and since then, he no longer takes such risks. Then, Jean's filmography was expanded by the films Brothers of the Wind, The Squad, The Visitors, Bastille Day, The Last Face, The Promise, Family Ice, The Adventurers, and The Girl in the Fog, in which he played a psychiatrist, Augusto Flores. This movie was well received by the public. La video camera que se portaba siempre a preso era una especie de defensa, un modo per observar de nascosto un mundo desconocido y e hostil. <laughs> in 2019, the actor starred in the drama 4L, the adventure film Paulina and the Mystery of a Film Studio, and the action movie Cold Blood. The latter two films were co produced by Belgium, France, and Ukraine. Moreover, the shooting of the action movie took place in the Ukrainian Carpathian Mountains. The following year, Jean appeared in the TV series Call My Agent and the war drama The Five Bloods, for his role in which, together with his colleagues, he was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award as Best Cast. The extra two points will get you a dummy corporation and the tax-free offshore accounts in Macau. You can then withdraw the funds from any bank in the world. He also starred in 10 episodes of the comedy series Die Hard and later in the action movie of the same name, the action film The Doorman, the comedy I Love You Coiffure, the historical war drama Waiting for Anya, the sci-fi drama Last Journey of Paul W.R., and the action film Rogue City. In 2021, Renault starred in the drama Promises, and the following year, he appeared in the TV series All Those Things We Never Said, Who Killed Sarah, and A Private Affair. At the moment, the actor is still active in cinema. Netflix's The Penguin and the Fisherman and Lift have already been completed. Also, the films The Man Who Saved Paris and Bird's Eye are in the pre-production stage. According to some reports, in the future, Jean Reno and Vincent Castle will appear in the horror movie Phantomas. The actor has never abandoned his passion for the theater and over the years of his career has repeatedly participated in theater productions. He admits that he still dreams of playing the roles of Othello, King Lear, and Falstaff. Renault is known to write plays in his spare time and once he even acted as a stage director at an opera house. To date, the celebrity's fortune is estimated at $70 million, which he earned not only by royalties for films but also by advertising contracts. Jean has appeared in commercials for the logistics company UPS, the media company Sky, the drink Pocari Sweat, and Toyota, Honda, and Bentley cars. By the way, the latter brand is in the actor's garage and he is now using it for traveling. Together with his family, Renault lives in France in the quiet town of Provence, where he even became deputy mayor in 2020.
Renault has lived in this location for over 30 years and has made no secret of the fact that this is where he wants to be buried. By the way, because of the fact that many of Jean's colleagues have passed away, he himself often worries about the approaching old age. According to some reports, the celebrity also owns an apartment in Paris, houses in Los Angeles, and in Malaysia. When free from filming, the actor spends time with his family. The Renault couple travels a lot, but also loves spending time at their estate. The man enjoys tending to the garden with exotic plants and even dabbles in olive oil production. He enjoys the simple life and considers the main disadvantage of his profession to be the inability to be an ordinary person, going to his favorite bakery, buying newspapers at the local grocery store, and many other things. Jean monitors his health and exercises daily. He was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes about 20 years ago. By the way, Renault has his own lucky charm, a plain metal plate given to him by his current wife. It has a simple phrase written on it, good always triumphs over evil. The celebrity has a special focus on philanthropy, helping to build a medical theater in Paris to conduct research on brain diseases. Despite the fact that in movies, Jean plays mostly tough guys or bullies, in real life, the man has never been in a fight. All in all, Renault admits that he is very sentimental and often cries while watching heartwarming movies. Jean is also a huge soccer fan. He has been a fan of Inter Milan for many years. To date, his filmography has more than a hundred films. What is your favorite movie starring Jean Renault? If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.